Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to War on the Sea with the expanded Arsenal mod as ever. So uh, we are in a very nice position. It's very happy, <laughs> makes me very happy to say that finally in this campaign on day 67 where we are on the defensive after trying to be on a very hard offensive, uh, very backwards and forwards this campaign has been. At least uh, compared to others at least. We are now reinforcing Task Force Thunder with Task Force 26. This is an Iowa and an Alaska with a couple destroyers in tow as well. So we should have some good, very hard hitting power. The Iowa is going to replace the Colorado and the Alaska is going to replace the Savannah, of course. Uh, but that should give us some hitting power and some good maneuverability as well. Because currently we are being uh, kited by this uh, very minor cruiser group. And because of our Colorado, with its terrible max speed, and with that even being diminished by the damaged uh, funnel there, we just can't keep up with it. So that's going to run rings around us and engage as it pleases. We are, however, trying to use Task Force Brawler to hunt down a very minor group led by Congo and uh, some minor cruisers as well, which we did size in this uh, general area previously, but we won't linger for too long because we know there is an enemy carrier also in this general open water area. We don't know exactly where. Could be right on top of us, could be all the way over in this sector over here. We don't know exactly. We will need to scout a little harder to find that, but I don't want to linger for too long because uh, that's only going to work against us. We are trying to take um, a lighter, apparently. Does that not change over? Uh, we don't actually have complete control, but we're very, very close uh, to taking that. You can see the balance of power in the final stages of conquering that for us. We do have some fair supply to troop ratio there to uh, tide us over. We are going to be moving more supplies once again to Guadalcanal today, and uh, once we get some more supplies, we'll be able to uh, bring this up to a level four airfield, which is amazing for us, because that will give us some massive air attack power in the center of the map, of course. We are gonna use uh, our large supplies first. It's gonna take some time to get over, and um, of course, get some supplies and fuel from uh, the new Hebrides, but of course, we have the time now, finally. Uh, we're on day 67, should be day 70, that we, so we do get resupplied and such, we'll get some more command points. Uh, let's review exactly the command points we do get, getting a total of 115 per week now, which is excellent. And in our dockyard, we have a Fletcher coming out the next day and a Bagley uh, come out in two days' time. We have another Iowa, the New Jersey, coming out in one week's time. In three days, we get a South Dakota, which is excellent and then we have to wait a little longer for Tennessee and Montana to come back out. So that's not a problem at all. Our list in the dockyard is finally diminishing a tad. <laughs> this is uh, the most ships I've ever had in the dockyard uh, in War on the Sea, so uh, it does show there is uh, some good challenge this campaign. Do still have that double Yamato group as well, hanging outside of Milne Bay. We are going to uh, bring some supplies over to Port Moresby to upgrade the airfield there to at least level three for some good defensive power there. But otherwise, uh, not really any major, major goals today. It's uh, just a case of getting supplies over to Guadalcanal and seeing what the enemy throws our way today to block it. So towards the evening, it's 18.29 hours, Task Force Brawler, as you can see, has come into contact with some enemy fighters. And of course, they're going to try and uh, strafe us down. Now, you might be thinking, come on, got a Keir Sarge, use the uh, Hellcats it comes with. We're not going to use them if uh, we know we're only being encountered by uh, enemy fighters. That's just a waste. We will lose Hellcats in that. And of course, fighters, they will damage our destroyers if that's what they decide to strafe. You can see they've not got any bombs attached, uh, even though they will be lightweight bombs if they do choose to do so. Um, so I'm not too bothered about losing uh, one or two destroyers for some strafing if it does come down to that. We do have some very excellent flak power. Um, and a good armour across the board outside of the destroyers, of course. So uh, once we get through to our flak and our small arms, we should be able to down a fair few of these zeros um, before they're able to do any major damage. It looks like they might be going for a heavy cruiser or a battleship here. If going for a battleship, well, uh, that is a complete waste of time, as uh, far as they should be concerned. And so much <laughs> talk for our small arms. There we go, finally getting one down. See where the other 
planes are going for. So these are actually going for our Jenkins. We're going to keep an eye on our damage there. You can see it's scattered there, taking an explosion. You see they will take some good damage, our destroyers. But uh, nothing we can't... No, nothing we can't keep on top of, as long as those fires don't spread, of course. We're going to have to get our damage control parties onto that. Where's this group going? It looks like it's going for the Illinois, perhaps. That's not going to be too much of a bother. We are downing a few more zeros now. There you go. It's just going to surely just bounce off of the deck there. Doing some scratching on our secondaries. And of course, how do we know this is only, uh, only fighters? Well, of course, we do get to see on the strategic map. We do look closely. I guess it's some sort of uh, superstructure fires by the looks of this, is it? On the New Orleans. Some very minor fires, but once again, only a couple there. So as long as they don't spread, we'll be absolutely fine. We do see just a couple more zeros coming in. I've shot down a good amount of them, only a handful remaining from the first few passes there. Let's come back to the Jenkins. Keeping on top of it. We've not spread the fires, which is excellent. We don't have this one zero left, apparently. So that shall go through. And there we go, it is down. So we'll of course let our damage control teams and such work their wonders. Slow down to a halt to help them out. And that'll do, ah, okay, so we do actually see some dive bombers coming in. All right, see, maybe we should have launched some Hellcats. I do stand corrected there, uh, but not a problem. Once again, we do have a lot of flak for that. We do see some more zeros. In fact, just the one zero is rather interesting. So what we'll do is we will take off, also fire flak for everyone. Um, like so, and we will try and target the oncoming vowels here. We do that, should work in our favor there. It looks like the uh, flak should start diminishing there. Let's reissue that uh, order maybe just to help that out. And of course, we're going to want to uh, move away from the vowels, so we are going to stop our halting orders there. Make sure that issue is through properly. Increase our speed because everything can keep up with the Kearsarge. You can see the flak has uh, ceased to this uh, Jake here. It should be coming out now if we're in range for the vowels. So how is that Jenkins doing? One fire spread over here, but again, it should be absolutely fine. We've dealt with the fires otherwise. Otherwise, just some minor scratches across the board. Well, you can see the enemy's gone for our Brooklyn there, and that has taken out completely a uh, port side secondary, which is a shame because that will double up as an AA cannon. Uh, we do have a lot of central flooding and fire here, which is a bit of a bother. It is a bit of a bother. I'm not going to lie about that one. I need to move something onto this fire there. But uh, I'm quite confident that our practiced uh, damage control teams will be able to sort that out. So, of course, the Brooklyn won't sink from this. And there we go, the uh, Brooklyn of course survived, dealt with all the flooding and we only really lost that secondary turret which is a shame for future air attacks and such but really not the end of the world at all. We uh, destroyed 23 of 27 aircraft in that attack which is very very nice indeed. So I think all in all pretty damn successful defence. Well, that does of course mean that that enemy carrier is close. We're not entirely sure where that's coming from. The enemy does have another 30 minutes or so of operational airtime. We do have a radial scout. I forget which one it is though. Uh, seems to be lost. There it goes, this one. So that's going around. We have issued the Kingfisher over here to look southwards of our task force. There you can see the extra uh, commands coming out here. We're not watching our flank though, so we'll come out from the Brooklyn and just watch this particular direction here. And I think that should be fine. Mm. Do we have any spares? We have a couple spares from this Pensacola. 
we will scout in this direction then a very short range there we'll keep that one spare so that we can launch that in engagements you can see a lot of enemy fighters and scouts coming out that's rather interesting indeed okay so a couple of things are happening at once here firstly we've uh, engaged what was likely that conga group over here with our kingfisher and we can see some more dive bombers coming in uh, from the north over here so we might want to uh, send out some scouts particularly in that direction and of course uh, launch out some hellcats we don't have much longer of the day left so launching out some hellcats wouldn't necessarily hurt whatsoever don't need to launch them out with any particular armaments just get them over task force brawler over here and we'll try and see exactly what this is that our Kingfisher has spotted. It does look at the moment to be that Congo group. Let's have a look, it certainly is. Okay, so let's refresh our memories. What was in this task force? Obviously the Congo. We do see an Oiro. What is the flanking destroyer? Looks like a uh, Yugamo, Sasha, or Kagero there. Quite likely the same across the board. Now we do see a Fubuki leading, and we see another Fubuki at the number two position. Another Oido there, so rather interesting. That'll be have some very nasty AA fire out here. We do see an enemy scout, so we can leave that and we shall remark that over here. Get rid of this pin. We can move Task Force Brawler over here. We might be lucky enough to get a very close range night engagement over here. But once again, we're not going to push it. If we can't engage this now, we'll just pull back down and get closer to Guadalcanal because we do need to defend that with something heavy if the enemy does come in with an invasion force. Well, it's not exactly night time, but you can see at 1940 hours, we have actually engaged that Congo group. It's coming directly towards us looking like it's fairly close range and not taking the time to identify anything yet let's go straight on over to that congo it's in the number four position and from the kearsarge that is 9.5 kilometers away so that is excellent for us um we're going to take a bit of a battering to begin with but i'm sure uh with the congo having very minimal armor we can deal with that fairly easy let's get some narrow spotting out to begin with we will fire immediately uh, let's get the Illinois on that as well. Lovely stuff. Spotting again. Uh, what is the visibility? It's 32% uh, because the weather is broken and of course it's getting rather dark. Sea state is at 6 and the wind speed's fairly high as well. Uh, the Kearsarge then, what exactly do your secondaries look like? They are 127 millimeters, so not quite going to pierce the armor of the Congo of course and uh, we have seen that um, we don't like to uh, confuse our directors in this game so we're just going to get some full uh, star shells out from both Illinois and Kearsarge there from our secondaries and that will help us out quite nicely. So our heavy cruisers can focus on I think an Oida. Let's go for the number three to begin with but it will identify both uh, to start with. So we do that, and uh, we did have a second one. Lovely stuff. We don't quite spot the number six destroyer, it's not a problem. And of course, we get some AP narrow spotting out as well there. We might get some uh, star shells out as well here. Uh, where are we? The mm, Pensacola, of course. There we go. Let's get onto this Oido, please. Spot there. And we get the Atlanta on to get the Atlanta on this Fubuki, please. Fire there. And let's go from the top Jenkins. Your position is here. Let's uh, identify this Fubuki. It's the first one on the list. Excellent. And the number two over here is also a Fubuki. We get some star shells out here. Well, I'm quite um, confident we're going to cover the enemy fleet at the moment with those. Jervis can fire on the Fubuki as well. Uh, HE will just go narrow to begin with there and we'll fire all of our other destroyers on to the number two Fubuki. I'll just remind myself where that Atlanta's fire is, the number one. Absolutely brilliant. So Livalette can go for number two. Lovely stuff. Why can't you fire no ammunition? Are you joking? That's very interesting. That will be because we've just spent a lot of ammunition firing at enemy planes. Now that is interesting. So what's the ammunition looking like across the board then for our uh, destroyers? Let's go back and look at the Samson. Got a few. All right, that's not too bad. Fletcher should have had a lot more. 
Fletcher should have had a lot more. What's the Jenkins looking like? Zero HE here either. All right, so our destroyer is going to be pretty much useless. Pretty much useless. Not the worst problem in the world, I suppose. We'll get our Brooklyn over onto the number five order. That was very interesting indeed. Very, very interesting indeed. Okay, well it's not not the end of the world. We'll turn around here to begin with at full speed. We'll get going. Let's see what we can do about maneuvers later on. What's the enemy up to? Very slow turning turrets on the Congo there. Very, very slow indeed. We're going to watch out. We can see that the enemy is firing out some torpedoes, of course. So what we'll do... Oh, we're getting some very nice hits already there. Uh, let's see what we want to do. We want to move level at, I think. We'll move level at... Let's move to a port side turn. Very hard port side turn. And we'll bring that round to circle back, I think. We'll do the same with Pensacola, actually. It's going to break. It's going to move out here. Samson can move out as well, but that won't turn round completely. Uh, Kearsarge and the Illinois are the priority for dodging torpedoes, of course. Uh, in fact, then, if that's the case, let's bring the levelette speed down a tad. And we'll actually just point towards the enemy so we do get some sort of sonar out. So let's activate sonar, deactivate radar. Don't need every ship using radar, especially if it's not going to fire any effective shells. Um, and we're going to slow down our speed quite hef heavily for the uh, Kearsarge, and that will slow down the remaining uh, part of its task force and group there. And really, that's all you need to do to uh, avoid torpedoes, unless there's the biggest spread, of course. Looks like it's only the one ship firing those off so far, though. How close are we getting uh, with the Congo? Might want to actually hold off for now and get some mangled shots out. That's very, very close indeed. Getting a 99 solution already. And a full broadside is always useful. So let's mangly do this. We'll just get one shot out. That is a quite a hard turn it's taken by the looks of things. Moving at 21 knots. Let's move over here, please. And then we'll just keep that on automatic fire. Get some nice hits onto the number two for the by the looks of things. Oh, good explosion onto the Oido there. Our heavy cruiser's doing quite well. Just a narrow miss there. That's probably our mangle shots there just about missing. is rather a shame. Levelette has already suffered a magazine explosion, so no such luck for that uh, sonar coming in there. And that's a shame. So what we're going to do is full speed with the Jervis. We need to get round here, please, to give our Kearsarge some room to manoeuvre. Atlanta could come round as well. Brooklyn, full speed ahead. We just need to uh, move our asses round, I think. Jenkins, what exactly are you doing? Break here. Break here. In fact, what we can do is bring the Jenkins and the Samson into a line ahead just to make things a little easier. That Oyedo, the number three, has suffered a magazine explosion. Of course, it's a front magazine as well. Excellent. That's completely annihilated its firepower there. But uh, So that means what we can do is move the Pensacola and our other heavy cruiser, the Minneapolis, of course, over to the number five Oyedo. Fire that. Thank you very much. Uh, where were we with Minneapolis? Let's uh, move that on over. Lovely stuff. Excellent. So where were we with uh, Samson and Jenkins? Can, in fact, uh, a line ahead. Samson obviously leading. And keep that pretty much on this source, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, Minneapolis then can try and avoid these torpedoes just by going around here, keeping a good broadside to the enemy, good speed, moving away. I think with the Kearsarge, I think we'll maintain our current course and speed for now.
Well, we've just spotted the enemy torpedoes coming and they are going for the Atlantis. We've managed to avoid them quite heavily with our Kearsarge. So just making sure our Atlanta turns around. Just watching their mini-map because very barely visible on the uh, on the surface of the wall. So we have dealt with that final order. Dodge those torpedoes. We did lose the Jervis. That did take a magazine explosion, which is rather sad to lose two destroyers in that battle. The Congo did go down to a magazine explosion as well. And I think we're going to leave that particular battle there. So it's uh, back to base with this particular task force, uh, simply to resupply. And of course, uh, replace our Jervis and Levelet. Uh, they served well, but uh, it's very sad to say goodbye to them, of course. So uh, let's get going. And we have dealt with that very minor scousing threat. It's probably best just to go straight back to the New Hebrides. Could it take 25.6 hours and we could decide what to do with the rest of the ships uh, when we are there. Still yet to join up Task Force 26 to reinforce uh, Task Force Thunder. Um, and that is the primary goal moving forwards. We're still getting our supplies back to the New Hebrides as well to rearm and restock there of course but now we're into the nighttime hours and uh, it's just a case of traveling unimpeded okay so it looks like we've finally found that carrier group after some immense scousing over the last couple of days we're finally on day 17 we have got our command points come in we get to our seconds have a look at this potential task force okay so what have we sighted we have oh okay we have a yamato this is not in fact a carrier group so once again it's a similar idea to the congo group we have a battleship as a centerpiece couple oidos and some um destroyers of course we have an akizuki as an upgrade to uh, one of the yaks we have uh, one of those over here and another akizuki so uh, we do have uh, let's go to the strategic map and uh, ping that one over here we'll task that as a Battleship, of course. Now, uh, Task Force Thunder has been uh, renamed to Task Force Lightning because of the speed we can bring and massive firepower now. Do we want to engage that Yamato with a single Iowa is the question. Historically, it probably had a fair chance, but in this game, it doesn't take very much for a battleship uh, or for a Yamato to destroy your battleship. It could do, of course, have the Alaska, which does have some good firepower itself and will help out a fair bit. Um, of course, we do have the heavy cruisers to help as well, but Task Force Brawl is not exactly too far away from this particular position. I wouldn't mind keeping Lightning uh, close to Guadalcanal. At least if there is a carrier out there, um, then the Kearsarge can help hunt down in the open waters there with its Hellcat. So I think we'll send Brawler out again to find that Yamato. Just got that uh, extra comfort with the double battleship there ourselves, of course, and we'll hunt that down. We are just now waiting for our large supplies to come in over here, or just these standard ones over here, because they're carrying some fuel. We have topped them up with a second Cimarron to increase the uh, capacity we uh, bring in each time. And uh, that won't quite be enough, I don't think, to get to uh, 400. Actually, no, we need 300 there, so we should be, yeah, it should be just under, actually. I thought we carried 150 fuel, so that's going to be rather unlucky, but we'll drop those off and we'll call it a day there. This is just that simple uh, cruiser task force, which is patrolling around. That's what's producing a lot of these scouts, so we want to try and take that on with Task Force Lightning, I think, which has been uh, scouting the straits up to the Shortland Islands. It's not found anything, unfortunately. So the enemy's finally calmed down by the looks of things, uh, but uh, too late, I think, for them. So our supply group has managed to get to Guadalcanal quite timely and uh, unimpeded. Let's have a look at our uh, Guadalcanal situation. Yeah, just 20 units of fuel away from upgrading there. Uh, do we have any fuel? No, we don't have it on the lighter, which is now ours, incidentally. Still just some minor resistance on both Malaita and Guadalcanal. We'll be dealing with that absolutely fine. So we'll come back with more supplies and fuel as a priority for our next trip. And that'll be absolutely brilliant. We will be able to upgrade to level four airfield. And then it's a case of, do we go straight for the victory? We'll of course be piling resources on, but as soon as that turns to a level five airfield, we get a day or so of turn by, we'll get a victory screen and we won't be able to continue with this particular save. So, with that being said, I am thinking 
uh, because we are very dangerously close to the end game now. I'm thinking of uh, trying to be a little more risky until, uh, well, once that's uh, turned over. And we do want to engage this particular Yamato task force, don't we? Um, just uh, so we can say we have done. We do have some good command points out, so what I might do is use those in the future to bring out uh, some more battleships, of course, and we can make a huge battleship task force uh, with any hope, and uh, combine that with lightning, maybe. Go over this, uh, go over this uh, Yamato task force, a double Yamato, double Fusa and a Congo to remind people there. And uh, we'll see, we'll see if we uh, fancy continuing on just for some fun afterwards. But that is going to have to be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. We are running out of time, very sad to say. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Once again, please do let me know in the comments section. And I shall see you in the future. May all of your nights and days be auspicious. Goodbye.